Good morning, good afternoon, and welcome everyone. Welcome to today's live broadcast, Latest Thinking in Scar Prevention and Treatment, a guide to managing and treating scars. I'm Alexis Krauss of Labberts, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is brought to you by Labberts and sponsored by Alliance Pharmaceuticals. For more information about our sponsor, please visit their website at alliancepharmaceuticals.com. So let's get started. I would like to remind everyone that this event is interactive. We encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want at any time you want during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click on the Send button. If you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation, click on the Support tab found at the top right of the presentation window or report your problem by clicking on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen. I'd like to now introduce our presenter, Dr. Luke Thiel, former head plastic and reconstructive department at the University Hospital of Men uh, Montpelier, president and founding member of G-SCARS Global SCAR Society. For a complete biography on our presenter, please visit the biography tab at the top of your screen. Dr. Teo, you may now begin your presentation. Welcome, sir. Good morning. Uh, my name is Luc Teo. I am assistant professor of uh, plastic reconstructive surgery in Montpellier University Hospital. And I will uh, uh, speak uh, today about uh, a guide to managing and treating uh, scars uh, using uh, 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 silicone and mainly uh, um, Uh We will speak about uh, the G-SCARS, which is a, a, a group of uh, experts uh, along the, the world. Uh, we'll speak about fundamentals, about the guidelines consensus, uh, about the, some adjunctive treatment approaches, uh, a kind of uh, patient journey, clinical cases, and the uh, possibilities and role of helicot in scar management and uh, prevention. The Global Scar Society was built from a previous international group, which was a club, the Scar Club, which was founded uh, in 2006 in, in Montpellier. The G-SCARS is focused on uh, research and therapy to promote scar management and prevention, help develop research around the scarring, create educational and informational support, and recommend an international assistance service for specific problems. Hypertrophic scars, keloids, scar atrophy, and other types of pathological scarring lead to a poor cosmetic and functional outcomes. But the G-SCARS aims to bring together all disciplines and stakeholders in the field, promoting either mechanical or and chemical approaches aiming to normalize the lives of patients with pathological scars. Fundamental. Normal wound healing, in fact, is a cascade of events from inflammation to maturation. Four, uh, four key uh, uh, wound healing phases which uh, overlap hemostasis, inflammation, proliferation, remodeling, and scar maturation. In fact, uh, in terms of timing, hemostasis uh, lasts some seconds, sometimes a little bit longer, but usually very short. Inflammatory phase uh, from hours to some days, depending on uh, the level, on different factors. We'll come back on that. The proliferative phase, uh, days to weeks. Uh, the remodeling phase is much longer, weeks to months. And uh, if uh, we have the, the sequence of of, of events from injury. We have uh, the first uh, uh, phase of vasoconstriction, platelet aggregation, and leukocyte migration. Uh, then on the inflammatory phase, early neutrophil, chemoattractant release, late macrophages, phagocytosis, and removal of foreign bodies and bacteria. The, during the proliferation phase, fibroblast proliferation, collagen synthesis, extracellular matrix reorganization, angiogenesis, granulation tissue formation, and finally, epithelization. But it's not finished. Epithelization doesn't guarantee that there will not 
uh, be any pathological event. It's done during remodeling. Remodeling is uh, uh, after coverage by epithelium. Uh, the, there is an, an extracellular matrix remodeling and an increase in tensing strength of the wound and the edges and the sutures or whatever. Uh, and then we come to yield tissue. Healing, yield tissue is very uh, long time after the injury, may last many years in some uh, children, for example. The classification of pathologic scars uh, can be reduced to two uh, 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 scenarios. One, hypertrophic scars. There is an excessive scar proliferation that does not extend beyond the edges of the initial wound. Very important. The growth starts some months after wound closure, three to six months after which the progression usually stops and the scar gradually becomes quiescent and stabilized. The full maturation process may take up to two years, but it may also regress within one year, depending on many factors, uh, tension uh, particularly. Keloids is different because it's a benign proliferation extending over the edges of the initial wound, can grow with time without signs of stabilization, can start directly after completed wound closure or later than a year, may appear spontaneously, but do not regress spontaneously, and the high recurrence rates after uh, just a surgical excision. The risk factors of pathological scarring are multiple. The great number of surgical interventions, area of high tension after surgery and wound closure, uh, on the back, the shoulder, on the sternum, lower abdomen, we have high tension. We have high tension on scars that cross joints or skin creases at right angles. Injuries affecting deeper layer of the skin, longer time to wound healing, very important, very important because uh, uh, in burns specifically. Darker skin types uh, for keloids mainly, young adults, adolescents, much more uh, frequent than in uh, older uh, people, elderly or adults. And persistence of local inflammation, whatever be the cause, uh, can be infection, can be uh, tension, can be uh, uh, a specific area or a specific type of skin. In terms of consensus, we started in 2002 and established uh, a sequence of, uh, of strategies starting at the end of the first month and during all along the evolution of the scar. So first of all, we have a medical strategy. So we define at-risk patients, and we try to prevent the occurrence of pathological scars. And we have different strategies, sequential for one, three, and six months. On the other side, we have the surgical strategy, which starts very early, prevention. The prevention means best practice in surgery. It's always very important to remember. And post-surgery, we can either replace with flaps, dermal substitutes, or tissue expansion. We can also try to improve the scars using laser, using radiotherapy, microneedling, cryotherapy, mechanical peeling, grafting, sculpturing. You see the number of possible surgical uh, uh, strategies. And we're still balancing between, because in scars we have a very few high level evidence uh, uh, based uh, uh, medicine. So most of the time we work on consensus. There are consensus on lasers, there are consensus on uh, uh, different types of uh, treatments, local or invasive or less invasive. So we try a G scars to uh, condensate all these possible actions and try to uh, propose consensus and guidelines as we did uh, last year. And we do it this year with a book which is appearing at Springer. If we look at patients at risk of scarring following surgery, which means we know that the type of surgery may uh, be a source of hypertrophic scar. So we are, working, we are speaking about prevention. So we have a surgery or a trauma, and we know perfectly how to practice good technique, wound management, 
to reduce the risk of scarring, but we have the risk of scarring. So the risk of scarring may be a high risk on the left, and usually systematically we will use silicon gel or uh, sheeting with or without intralesion or corticosteroid injection. On the right, we have a low risk, but is the patient concerned by his scar? And yes, we will also use silicon gel or uh, silicon sheeting. He's not concerned. We have a standard counseling of uh, prevention to exposure to, to, to sun. And if uh, the risk of uh, scarring is increasing in the central part, uh, then we, we will uh, protect uh, using uh, silicon gel or uh, sheeting or hypoallergenic paper tape or onion extract cream and others uh, um, uh, atypical, uh, I would say, uh, uh, proposals. Post-surgery. Post-surgery, we have a, 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 a booming uh, uh, solution uh, which are coming uh, since uh, the last two or three years. Uh, uh, one of them is very simple, is the Ogawa, Ogawa tape, which is a scary strip which is called um, adhesive sutures, which is a specialized skin tape to reduce wound tension uh, mildly, I would say, and support uh, scar tissue. It, we begin uh, this type of uh, uh, mechanical uh, uh, limited uh, uh, system to uh, uh, just after suture removal and then for at least three months. So it's a little bit constraining uh, for the con constraining for the for the patient. Ogawa tapes contain steroids and is used for uh, one month onwards. On the on the right, you see something which is uh, proposed and uh, a very uh, smart system uh, composed of, uh, instead of uh, uh, sutures, glue, tapes, and trips, it, it's a system which uh, will uh, finish uh, the suture. And as far as you have a dermal uh, perfect suture, you can prevent to have an epithelial suturing by uh, using this system which is uh, just a mechanical uh, uh, strips which are uh, capable to, uh, uh, to progress, uh, uh, to make the, the two edges of the scar progressing to each other. Uh, no pain, uh, no scar uh, pigmentation. Uh, vascularization can be seen at different time points in the postoperative uh, period compared with, with staples. There is an improved scar vascularity, uh, pigmentation, pliability, and hate uh, versus sutures and uh, some uh, randomized control trial were uh, recently uh, 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 realized with a zip. Massage therapy is, is very good. It's uh, often recommended. We are speaking here about scars after burn injury. It may prevent, uh, really improve hypertrophic scarring. Uh, reduces the uh, scar pain, uh, itching, thickness, discoloring, and redness. It may decrease the transepidermal uh, water loss, uh, as you see here. Uh, different uh, variations on massage, uh, using the hands or using machines. Some machines can, uh, can be used also with uh, some aspiration system inside, which may uh, help into uh, uh, reducing uh, the abnormal uh, collagen proliferation. Negative pressure wound therapy made a, a lot of evidence uh, during the last uh, three, four years uh, with good randomized control trials proposing to stabilize during the postoperative period using negative pressure wound therapy the edges of the sutures and to create some aspiration of the fluid which could come from the suture. So double action, one, prevention of postoperative infection and uh, prevention of uh, uh, wound dehiscence. Uh, um, it's sealed to make uh, a tight. The, the sealing may uh, come to uh, a small, is, 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 uh, come to, to, the, to the dressing. Most of the time, uh, this uh, uh, it helps to, to reduce post-surgical post infection by uh, making the, the small amount of liquid uh, issuing from the suture 
collected in the dressing you see here with uh, the two examples of uh, uh, medical devices proposed in, 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 in negative pressure wound therapy after surgery, which is called incisional negative pressure wound therapy. The medical strategy after one month can use also a different uh, uh, options. Uh, laser therapy is one option which is uh, frequently used, especially in Asia, uh, in Korea, uh, very frequently because even the, the transient inflammation, the redness, which occur after burn or after trauma or even after surgery, uh, may uh, lead to some uh, cosmetic uh, 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 problems or uh, difficulties for the patient. So laser therapy uh, became very popular uh, in this period, in this post-operative period or post-trauma period. Uh, PDL or YAG, one month or two, three months, uh, most uh, effective for hypertrophic scar or for flat scaling, limited efficacy for uh, sicker scars and uh, um, uh, large scaloids. Fractional laser therapy, uh, um, if PDL is uh, uh, ineffective, uh, which induces a, a wound dealing response, a second wound dealing response, resulting in increased type 3 collagen production and promotion of scar remodeling. So it's uh, different possibilities to use. Uh, some uh, ablative lasers will, uh, uh, may also be, be used, but we will we'll come back on that. Microneedling is, uh, 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 well, uh, something which uh, uh, became popular uh, during the last two years. Uh, it's uh, a repetitive application on stretched scars, horizontally, vertically, and obliquely, to achieve uh, a uniform uh, pinpoint bleeding to induce uh, a new uh, wound healing cascade. So uh, this is uh, uh, aggressive, but uh, may uh, uh, induce a little bit like peeling, induce uh, something which is. Uh, 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 re, uh, restarting of the wound healing, uh, uh, especially the growth factors and a, a kind of uh, reactivation of uh, epithelial, epithelialization and uh, uh, reorientation of the collagen fibers. Scars treated with uh, vitamin A and vitamin C cream for at least one month before and after microneedling uh, to maximize the the dermal collagen synthesis may, may, may be added. After three months, most of the time, especially in burns, uh, uh, the pressure garments, compressive garments, are proposed. Uh, they were promoted by a French uh, specialist and uh, reimbursed in France. Uh, there is no strong evidence-based uh, uh, data, but it's used widely and accepted everywhere, uh, even uh, in the uh, in US or uh, in, in uh, East countries. It may be difficult to find a garment that fits the wounded area properly, but most of, of, of them are uh, realized, um, uh, just adapted to the, to the shape and, and the size. Uh, uh, and the, the patients often uh, find wearing the dressing or garments uncomfortable and uh, they do not always adhere to the, to the guidance, especially young uh, people, uh, uh, girls, uh, they don't want to show up uh, with these garments and uh, this is why uh, in some, um, well, in some occasions uh, 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 other, other options are, are, are proposed, uh, like uh, making up uh, in, uh, for a very transient uh, period of time. Intralesional therapies maybe uh, were, were developed with different uh, uh, um, drugs. One of them is uh, 5-FU. 5-FU is uh, uh, an antimitotic drug, very well known in uh, digestive cancer, especially. And uh, it has been starting in the uh, in, uh, in US uh, with uh, the Longacre uh, team in San Francisco and progressively adopted by uh, the Chinese colleagues, and then the German colleagues, with a, a different uh, type of, uh, of uh, proposals, uh, starting with uh, very low doses, but now uh, high doses 
means uh, 50 mil by, uh, uh, by 50 micrograms per mil uh, are uh, sometimes proposed essentially in Germany and also in, in, in France. It enhances scalar regression in most of 45% uh, of, of the patients. And uh, uh, the recurrence of uh, treated uh, in calories in less than 50% uh, of patients. Localized effects include, include pain, it's painful, at the injection site, hyperpigmentation, uh, skin irritation and ulceration when the doses are very high, uh, but usually it's uh, uh, well tolerated. Steroids try and skin uh, alone acetonide, uh, thought to inhibit fibroblast growth and CGF beta induced collagen type 1 expression. The response rate of uh, 50 to 100 percent, but the recurrence rate uh, were estimated in different uh, uh, trials uh, to nine, between 9 and 50 percent. Uh, we have complications if, uh, if the injection is not strictly inside the scar if the subcutaneous tissue around are injected, and especially the, the, the fat, and you have fat atrophy, which uh, uh, renders the cosmetic aspects uh, uh, worse than. Uh, so needs to be done by people who know. Uh, botulinum, botulinum toxin A, uh, well, the mechanism of action is uh, still unclear, and the data are inadequate for the moment. Uh, it's more effective than the intralegional uh, steroid, uh, well, supposedly, uh, but, uh, well, discussion still uh, with uh, the botulinum toxin uh, because, well, the minimal side effects, but the, 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 the effect is, is, uh, is not uh, very, uh, very important. Uh, after six months, we can also use the uh, autologous fat grafting with adipose stem cells. It's, uh, uh, a recent uh, uh, strategy, uh, which can, uh, uh, very simple to realize in the OR, can improve the scar pliability, the color, the thickness, and reduce pain in hypertrophic and mature uh, scars. Uh, known to uh, uh, tolerate harvest and graft injection better than mature adipocytes, reduce those factors that promote angiogenesis and stimulate endothelial cells, fibroblast and tissue progenitor cells to remodel the scar tissue. And, uh, well, some evidence uh, appear, and uh, many uh, surgeons would adopt that because it's, uh, they, they, they find it uh, quite effective. Uh, the, there's an analgesic effect of uh, uh, this uh, adipose stem cells, uh, which are mediated via nerve reaper and release of contractures because you can inject that uh, after release, the mechanical release, surgical release of contracture as a prevention of recontracture, and you interpose some uh, adipose stem cells uh, uh, between the, the two layers. Uh, you see uh, uh, post injection, post excision radiotherapy in keloid is also uh, was a source of debate 10 years ago. Uh, but uh, solved more or less by uh, an extensive review of literature, which makes uh, that uh, radiotherapy by itself uh, is not causing any uh, cancer, degeneration, or uh, uh, big problems, I would say. Uh, it's used to prevent recurrence by inhibiting new keloidogenic inflammation via immune cell inhibition and neovascularization. Initially, uh, conventional photon beam radiotherapy was used, but more recently, electron beam radiotherapy and uh, brachytherapy are used with small doses. Uh, uh, and uh, the, the different radiation doses are depending on the location of the keloid with a max of uh, 30 grade, uh, one week after excision, and it reduces uh, recurrence rates uh, to uh, 10% or less. We have good evidence that uh, this injection, realized quite quite early after surgery, has an important uh, uh, effect on uh, preventing the recurrence. In terms of surgical strategy, uh, remember we spoke about we evoked the, the, the good surgical principle. Good surgical principles means minimal tissue trauma during this dissection. Good hygiene 
tension-free wind closure, respect of Langer's line, uh, all uh, residents in surgery, in plastic surgery, should know where the Langer's line are and don't make an incision crossing this line and just do the incision parallel or inside the lines in order to have the minimal cosmetic uh, uh, complication. In terms of post-surgery, after surgery, uh, the, the proposals, the consensual proposals of G-scars are an intelligent uh, uh, silicon reapproximating scar regime, uh, scar therapy dressing device, uh, including silicon, or a device regulating skin tension over the edges, like the zip, or a negative pressure post-surgical uh, systems. Uh, we evoked that, uh, PICO, Prevena, or Avon. And then uh, fat grasping, if needed, uh, some uh, months after. So, surgic, if, we, if we evoke the scar replacement, it's impossible. We have tried to uh, remodel, to uh, change a little bit the orientation of the collagen, but it doesn't work. Then we have to uh, think about uh, uh, removing the scar and changing the aspect of the scar using different uh, solutions. In terms of uh, surgery, we have at disposal flaps, either free flaps or pedicle flaps or local flaps. We have dermal substitute plus skin grafting. And we have uh, also over grafting, replacing um, uh, uh, an hypertrophic scar or a keloid by a skin graft harvested on the same patient. Another, another scar is created. Or tissue expansion, and uh, we have some examples of uh, uh, combining microsurgery uh, by a tissue carrier, for example, and tissue expansion, which bring uh, a, a flap large enough to cover the face or to cover a very large area. Example, uh, a local flap uh, that you see here to cover uh, the, the heel. Uh, which is transferring uh, the skin, which is in the middle part of the foot, to the back part of the foot, and creating a, 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 a loss of uh, tissue uh, on, the, on, the, on the middle part of the foot, and this loss of tissue will be uh, covered using skin grafting. Uh, this is the rotation flap, uh, which uh, is classical in plastic surgery. You can use regional flap, you can use perforator flap, which are uh, just a, a possibility of uh, dissecting the flap, but also one vessel, one artery, one vein, which makes uh, this uh, pedicle an axis of rotation, of trans, trans, transplantation of, uh, of, uh, of this flap to another area. Distant flap makes uh, uh, microsurgical revascularization or combined free flap like the one you see on the right, which is coming from the shoulder and which was created uh, with a model of, uh, uh, of a technique which is called prefabrication. And we published, uh, like, uh, we published uh, this uh, technique uh, a long uh, time ago in the Lancet. Uh, and you see uh, how it was uh, during uh, uh, surgery before the coverage of this uh, scarred area on, on, on on the neck. So it's an, uh, tissue expansion will bring an extra skin. Uh, same area, more or less, or the, the proximal area, because the, the, the color uh, matches uh, with, uh, with uh, the area which will, be, uh, which will receive this flap. The texture and the thickness of the surrounding skin are, are the same aspect uh, and, uh, and, and uh, the same sensation very low risk of complication, and the remaining skin uh, will cover the donor skin region, means uh, we don't harvest all the flap, we just harvest uh, what, what is needed, and the rest uh, of uh, expanded tissue will uh, uh, be uh, able to uh, reapproximate and cover the donor site area. We have also some agentive treatment approaches, uh, and we, we evoked uh, uh, lasers in uh, pathological scar uh, prevention. Uh, there is a, uh, a recent uh, paper uh, published by a French colleague 
uh, with uh, um, make a, a randomized control trial with a single pass during the post-operative period with a 12, 10 nanometers laser treatment performed immediately after surgery. It was on uh, breast surgery. It was a prospective randomized double-blind control trial. 40 women undergoing bilateral breast reduction with inverted T-scar, uh, laser versus no laser uh, per breast. Six months after surgery, the scar volume was measured uh, uh, and we had 36, uh, they had 36 uh, percent lower when they applied the lash treatment versus no treatment. At one year, the volume uh, of the scar was 29 percent lower, roughness was uh, 17 percent, surface was 10, uh, 11 uh, percent lower, and from uh, week six to one year, uh, the patient expressed a preference for the breast treated with lash. Another adjunctive uh, treatment is photobiomodulation, which requires an application of a chromophore containing gel, uh, which is activated by lead. So a lead lamp will activate uh, the gel. You see on the, on the, on, on the knee of this patient that uh, there is a, a kind of pouch, uh, including the chromophores, and the, the lead will activate the chromophore, making the chromophore uh, uh, giving a, 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 a range of different uh, length waves uh, of uh, different. So it's, it's not strictly a laser. It's in between. It's a, a capacity to um, expose a, a scar uh, to different length waves coming from the same machine, the same combination between uh, the, the, the chrome force and, and the lead. The investigator of a published many studies, one of them uh, allowed them to, to conclude that the, the first treatment is uh, during the, the, the week after surgery and uh, six treatment of five minutes each and uh, a six months follow-up. If we come to epidermal cell culture, we have to say that uh, for the moment uh, there are not very conclusive uh, uh, trials. We have several uh, attempt to demonstrate that uh, this uh, cell culture, uh, epidermal cell culture, were uh, uh, efficient. Uh, EpiCell, uh, which is a cultured epidermal autograft composed of the patient's own keratinocytes, grown ex vivo in the presence of proliferation arrested murine fibroblasts. Or EpiFix, which is a dihydrated amniotic chorionic membrane allograft. Or EpiSkin, which is a reconstructed human epidermis from normal human keratinocyte culture on the collagen matrix, so allogenic. Skinetic RHE, uh, which is a reconstruction human epidermis from normal human keratinocyte cultures on an INAT polycarbonate filter. You see that uh, uh, different attempts, uh, others, uh, uh, which are, well, the essential of bioengineered skin substitutes which is um, uh, hopefully becoming better and better each year. But uh, uh, you see that depending on where you live, uh, depending on the regulations you have, in the U.S. you can use everything. In uh, Europe, you cannot use cellularized uh, using allogenic cell. Uh, uh, so uh, there is a differences uh, in different uh, continents, I would say. Coming to non-cellularized, you have nylon mesh or collagen dermis and silicon covered by silicon film. Uh, as cellular matrices uh, from bovine or porcine collagen, Integra, very well known, Matriderm, or another one, a new one, which is Nevelia. As cellular matrices from hyaluronic acid, like a yellow matrix, or allogenic substitutes from, coming from cadaver skins, essentially in US, alloderm. If you go to cellularize using allogenic cells, uh, you may have just fibroblasts or keratinocytes and or fibroblasts. Uh, typically, neonatal foreskin fibroblasts with a mesh of, of matrix or uh, allogenic matrices from neonate human fibroblasts like Celaderm or Dermagraft or allogenic composite matrices from human keratinocytes 
fibroblasts with bovine or porcine collagen, like aplicraft, or cell, or transcite. And if we go to cellularize using autologous cells, there is one which is coming, French, Bordeaux, uh, which is called Genius Kids, very ambitious, uh, but uh, uh, some evidence that on an acellular matrix, matrix uh, they were able to uh, make uh, epidermal tissue, epidermal cells uh, cultivated uh, in a, a period of time which is short, uh, between two weeks and, uh, and three weeks, uh, and different from what we got until now. So, promises. Tissue engineering uh, is, uh, uh, well, a topic of uh, high interest, uh, a lot of research uh, uh, everywhere in the world, because the new skin would uh, certainly be uh, 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 a very important step forward in terms of uh, uh, reconstruction. So dermal or uh, epidermal, dermal, epidermal are composite skin substitutes and to mimic the histological structure of normal skin, where both epidermal and dermal layers are present. Uh, this allows some functional uh, resemblance to the normal skin. And although skin has a sophisticated and advanced choice, there have been reports of uh, immune rejections uh, uh, concerning essentially epidermal, because uh, uh, dermal uh, components uh, in humans have no capacity of uh, immunologically uh, reject. Uh, in order to prevent rejection, new approaches of uh, keratinocyte cell culture, uh, multiplying the passages, uh, uh, and other dermal substitutes have been recently developed. This is, again, the genius uh, uh, scheme. We have emerging technology, uh, and uh, like extracorporeal shockwave therapy, thought to improve scar appearance, uh, reducing fibroblast density and collagen fiber thickness which give a benefit on many types of wounds and scars with little discomfort, uh, it hurts a little bit, but a few complications and very easy uh, in terms of application. In patients presenting hypertrophic scar, uh, the, the, the technique improves scar age, pliability, pigmentation, and vascularity. And platelet rich plasma, uh, PRP, which by itself is another world uh, many solutions, many techniques, many uh, uh, combinations. Now the basic principle is an autologous blood-derived product with platelets uh, with a local application which causes a supra-physiological release of growth factor that modulates uh, pathway involved in tissue inflammation and repair. Result is an increase in collagen and elastic fibers and can be injected or just uh, topically applied during and after microneedling, and we, we evoke that. Rehabilitation. By itself, it's, it's also a world, and it's uh, different if you live in the uh, US or if you live in Europe, if you live in, in, in Asia. Because uh, you have uh, millions of options from ambulatory to specialized centers, depending on if you have just a cosmetic problem, or if you have just a transitory inflammation, or if you have a serious uh, impairment of your function, uh, function in the uh, in a joint, function in a, uh, in in, uh, in in the neck, in uh, in the well uh, different uh, uh, anatomical locations. So in these rehabilitation centers or in this rehabilitation technique, you may have some uh, differences. We spoke about compression garments. Some of them are coated with silicone. Splints, uh, hard to, uh, to wear, but efficient in terms of hand uh, rehabilitation. Massage, and we spoke about that. Physiotherapy, different types of massage. Hydrotherapy, uh, and uh, psychological support. In some uh, countries, you have hydrotherapy uh, in specialized centers for uh, the end of maturation process with the softness of the skin being improved by this hydrotherapic uh, solution. In terms of clinical cases, we have selected two cases. One is uh, Ilo Kilovic, an uh, ASEAN origin 
patient, 19 uh, years old. And we, we opted for 5-FU uh, long-term treatment, repetitive treatment, more than six months, using 5-FU to decrease fibroblast proliferation. And after six months of 5-FU, injected locally, either, well, every month uh, at the beginning, and then every week at the end, we ended with uh, surgery. And we look at, uh, on the right, uh, the aspect one year of post surgery. So the recurrence seems uh, really decreased uh, by uh, preparing before surgery uh, uh, the local uh, risk of reproliferation of the fibroblast. If we use CO2 lasers, especially in burns, to treat hypertrophic scars, which are uh, sparsely uh, uh, extended over the, uh, over the area, the scarred area, uh, then you, you will, uh, 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 with CO2 laser, you will remove, uh, it's an ablative laser, so we will improve the height of the scar. We still have uncertain results on uh, pigmentation because melanocytes are different from uh, keratinocytes, and there are a few techniques which are really efficient on repigmentation. So you see the results after the procedure, uh, six months after. Speaking about coaching, scar management and prevention, we have uh, some uh, guidelines on abnormal scarring uh, for uh, hypertrophic and kill. So in 2002, when we started with uh, Tom Musto to, uh, well, to propose the first international uh, consensual guidelines, it highlighted a, a primary role for silicone gel sheeting in the management of a wide variety, variety, variety of abnormal scars. In 2014, uh, some other guidelines and our guidelines were uh, proposed and uh, concluded that silicon-based products are uh, efficacious in scarring prophylaxis and management of hypertrophic scars. Uh, newer gel preparations overcome limitations inherent in gel sheeting. Gel sheeting is difficult to wear. A gel is more easy to, to handle. And silicon sheeting or gel is universally considered as the first line prophylactic and treatment option for hypertrophic and minor keloid scars. And in 2020, you have the question mark on uh, should we change? Should we come from a gel to another option? So what are the uh, respective advantage of uh, silicon versus uh, silicon sheets? On the left, you have the silicon gel sheet and uh, some uh, skin issues uh, may occur, like pruritus, skin rash, or skin maceration. We don't observe that, uh, that with the silicone gel, of course. Uh, the odor emanating from the gel sheet is not observed using the silicone gel. Uh, silicone gel sheet is very limited in terms of indication for scars located adjacent to joints because of the restricted movement and adherence, uh, which uh, is not the case for, for silicon gel, which can be used for skin folds and uh, hairy areas. The appearance in visible areas for the gel sheets, uh, because it, 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 can stay, it cannot stay by itself. You need uh, to have a fixation system with this sheet. Uh, silicon gel is discreet, transparent. You can, you can apply that on the, on the nose, on, on the front, on a visible area. Uh, the, the, the compliance of the patient is poor using sheets because it's uh, something uh, which is boring to wear. Uh, for silicon gel, uh, it's, uh, the acceptability testing is much better. Uh, gel sheet may require taping uh, to hold in place, and the gel adheres by itself. Uh, uh, gel sheets can be reusable, uh, washing uh, be between use, but shown to have a poor durability. Uh, and the silicon gel 
have uh, two time daily application for 20 hours of uh, treatment. The sheet is not suitable for large area and the gel can be applied easily to large area, particularly with the spray, the, the version of the, of the gel which is in spray. And may cause excessive sweating in hot, humid climates uh, when using sheets, uh, and it's preferred for hot, humid uh, climates. Uh, the mode of action is the same. It was uh, uh, developed by Tom Musto uh, some years ago. They may help, uh, silicon products may help to prevent excessive scar formation by restoring the water barrier through occlusion and hydration of the stratum corneum and need to be used as soon as the wound suture is healed. So very quickly, very early. Musto uh, and his team uh, of soft nursing uh, used the rabbit model which is uh, excessive dermal scarring, very difficult in, 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 in animals to find the model of excessive dermal scarring. Kelocote was compared with tissue adhesive in their meal and barrier film and cavillon with uh, treatment starting at day 14. The control was no treatment and the negative control of tape stripping. Uh, each rabbit was their own control, one ear, with either occlusion or uh, TF and the other ear, no treatment. The scar elevation index was significantly reduced with Kelocote and other treatments when compared with no occlusion, with a, a P lower than 0 0.05. The EWL, transepidermal water loss, was reduced with all treatments. So occluded wounds may be in advanced state of repair. This is the conclusion, and you see the difference in terms of transepidermal water loss on uh, below. So randomized controlled uh, trial uh, in 30 patients, another study, with bilateral immature scars, hypertrophic scars, mocularic scars, and for each patient, one scar was treated and the other left untreated. Each patient was assigned to one of the three groups, Kelocot, applied morning and evening, Silicon gel sheeting applied every day and left in place during the morning and night. Yellow coats applied in the morning and silicon gel sheeting applied at night. Elevations included, uh, uh, evaluations included redness, height, and softening of the scars. So this was uh, the conclusion. Yellow coats reduced scar height by a greater amount than silicon gel sheeting or no treatment. So uh, here we have an important uh, step forward because uh, the, the, there is a, a, a more efficacy with the silicon gel uh, due to all the different aspects we already presented. Uh, Elocode reduced also scar erythema with a greater amount than silicon gel sheeting or no treatment. And uh, we have a, an erythema score uh, comparing the treated scar and treated scar uh, for uh, each group. Elocode on the left, silicon gel sheet on the right. Another uh, item was uh, Kelocot reducing symptom of itching, irradiation, skin maceration after 90 days of treatment. And again, you see the differences on uh, uh, with a, a P lower than uh, 0.001. Patients stated that uh, Kelocot was far easier to use than silicon gel sheeting because of the spray. Kelocot made adhering of the treatment regimen easier than silicon gel sheeting. Uh, and again, you have this uh, p-value, which is very uh, important in terms of uh, significance. <laughs> silicon gel in hypertrophic and colloid scar prevention. Uh, pro prospective randomized parallel group comparison study with two arms. 80 patients with kelocote, uh, among them 72 completed study, and 80 patients had no treatment unless they showed signs of hypertrophy, and 76 completed the study. The main cause of surgery was benign or malignant skin lesions needing, needing excision, and also included scar revision and cosmetic surgery, like breast augmentation and reconstruction. Twice daily kelocote treatment compared with no treatment from 10 days to three weeks after surgery for four months. Patients were evaluated using a four-grade scale 
over six months of treatment. And this is uh, two-thirds of patients who use Kelocor did not develop an abnormal scarring after four months of treatment. A further 26% develop only mildly hypertrophic scars. Only one patient who receives Kelocor developed a keloid. And you see the different uh, uh, patients in a study uh, published uh, in 2007 uh, with uh, different grades and uh, comparing Kelocor in blue and no treatment in, in green. So what is the significance of Kelocot UV? Kelocot UV, uh, well, it's a combination. The guidelines recommend avoiding exposure of wounds to the sun, all of them. It's a need. It's a need because it reduces inflammation. Kelocot UV con contains SPF 30, which can absorb up to 97% of the radiation coming from uh, UVB. So adding that will certainly uh, help in uh, uh, preventing exposure to the sun uh, because sometimes you, you cannot uh, prevent exposure to the sun because of different, uh, 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 different uh, modes of life or uh, of way to do it. Uh, and the UV uh, radiation, uh, I, told, I said that already, is associated with the scar hyperpigmentation. So, some results. Kelocot UV, before Kelocot UV on the left, and you see uh, different types of scars, one on the abdomen, the other just below uh, the, uh, the, the eye, and after three months of Kelocot UV treatment, you see the aspect and uh, uh, this is uh, something which is quite spectacular, I would say. In summary, the treatment next to silicone gel, increasing focus on 5-FU fractional lasers. Prevention of unpleasant scarring is more effective than treatment of ex existing scars. So please uh, try to think about the scar when you operate. Focus on good surgical practice and, and, and post-operative mechanical control. Many surgeons don't see anymore their patients after surgery. And uh, uh, you should think about that and have a look one month after your uh, surgery. Uh, patients are at risk systematically uh, silicone uh, during, uh, after, immediately after healing. Many products on the market so you have to advise patients. You have to show them uh, what is the gradation between the uh, different options, sun protection for all of them, and silicon sheets if uh, there is a compliance, uh, and a stronger focus on silicon gels, which are easy to handle. You can have in your pocket. You don't need to hide yourself. If worsening of the scar occurs, patients should return to the treating doctor as soon as possible. And in terms of kelocote, the max magnitude of occlusion provided by silicone therapy appears to be critical. The unique patented formulation of kelocote leads to a thin, robust, breathable, effective layer that remains on the skin for a prolonged period, and providing occlusion comparable with silicone sheets, but it's better in terms of compliance. The clinical beneficial effect of kelocote on scarring is comparable to kelocote gel sheets, and that has been demonstrated in various studies in more than, more than close to 2,000 patients for the treatment and uh, prophylaxis of uh, uh, pathophysiological uh, scarring. Uh, you will find here some uh, references which are very useful when you uh, uh, speak or talk about uh, scars because uh, even if uh, uh, the evidence base is not very high, you have a lot of uh, references concerning scars, which is a, a universal problem uh, everywhere in the world. And you see what the, the, the most uh, striking, important uh, references, which uh, are uh, summarized here, uh, 63 uh, important references, I would say. Uh, and I thank you for your uh, attention.
Thank you, Dr. Chia, for that informative presentation. We will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen, and we'll answer as many of your questions as we have time for. So let's get started. Our first, questions, our first question is, so Dr. Teo, as more, as more advanced treatments come to the fore, will there still be a place for older therapies in the prevention and treatment of scarring? Yes, um, I think uh, uh, silicon is, an, is, is, is quite old. It started uh, in uh, 1983 in uh, Australia, so uh, it's an old story. The, 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 the old silicone uh, uh, is difficult to apply, difficult to maintain on site, and uh, well, yes. Uh, old therapies uh, like uh, lasers also, uh, but uh, we, it happens now that uh, laser people, dermatologists or surgeons uh, practicing lasers are using silicone in combination. So, uh, yes, there are a few places for older therapies, but it, it's such a booming in terms of medical devices, uh, solutions, uh, techniques, that uh, the older therapies are a little bit disappeared, I would say. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So, Dr. Tio, our next question. Are subcut sutures still required with the ZIP system? Uh, good question. Uh, I think that the, the, using the ZIP, you will close the epidermis. Uh, the, 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 the deep part of the, of the suture should be secured. And uh, I think uh, as far as you can uh, mechanically improve the resistance of enlarging by uh, having a, a deep suturing uh, using resorbable material and limit the effect of the zip to just the epithelium, I think it's, it, it will be better. But uh, another point concerning the zip is uh, the company uh, uh, is uh, uh, proposing uh, two, two weeks of, of treatment. In some occasions, like uh, you have to reject uh, some benign tumor over the, the nose or in, in, in tension areas, uh, you, you may prolong the, the use of the, of the Z, even if it's, if it's not very cosmetically accepted. But uh, the final result is, is, is quite good. Uh, uh, and in some, some uh, skin resections uh, after burns, for uh, scar burns, uh, you may uh, uh, prolong the, the zip for, for, for one month and a half. Thank you, Dr. Tia. So we do have time for one more question, but I do want to remind our audience that any questions that we, are unable, that we were unable to answer today and those that do come in during the on-demand period, they will be addressed uh, by our speaker via the email address that you provided at the time of registration. Okay, so Dr. Tia, our final question for you today. Is there, do you have any advice on treating skin type 5 or 6 with very dark stretch marks, dyes, buttocks, for example, you know, laser therapy or retinoids? Uh, yeah, uh, laser, uh, laser is by itself is, is a world. So uh, depending on the, on the, it's just a dark, uh, you have some uh, uh, ablative laser, which can uh, uh, lighten a little bit these uh, dark marks. Uh, dye laser also may improve the color. As far as you get some fibrous tissue, uh, you have to combine and to uh, to start with some uh, some uh, ablative laser, taking uh, uh, care and um, and be very cautious about the 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 the, 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 the wavelengths uh, because depending on uh, on uh, on uh, well not not to be too too deep in terms of uh, ablation, but uh, uh, this is a, a real uh, big issue, and uh, uh, I would go for for laser. Uh, uh, first, uh, uh, another, uh, at the contrary, another uh, big big issue is a uh, acromic scar. Where for the moment, I just uh, the, we we had this discussion at the G scars, and the only uh, possible solution is uh, the solution coming from Australia, from uh, Fiona Wood, uh, whose name is Resell, which can bring some melanocyte over this uh, discolored. 
uh, areas in 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 uh, in uh, in dark skins. Perfect. Thank you so much, Dr. Teal. Before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions, questions that we did not have time for today. And again, those that are submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by the speaker via the contact information that you provided at the time of registration. So we'd like to once again thank you, Dr. Teo, for your time today and your important research. We would also like to thank Labberts and our sponsor, Alliance Pharmaceuticals, for underwriting today's educational webcast. You are able to view the webinar on demand. Labberts will alert you via email when it's available for replay. That's all for now. Thank you for joining us, and until next time, bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.